Henry's a gamer. I'm a gamer. You're probably a gamer. And as gamers, we know that when it comes to boss fights, there are boss fights and then there are boss fights. Yeah, that's right. And here are some of the toughest, most cinematic and just generally badass showdowns that 2024 has thrown our way. So you can rate how hardcore we actually are. Let's go through our pain. This video is brought to you by Fight Night. It's technically a boss from last year because this game came out in 2023, but I am officially, as of the literally a week into season five of Diablo 4, was when I finally beat the Echo of Lilith, which is not easy. Like this, this fight is seen as like the pinnacle fight in the game at the moment. It's like the toughest boss. She has like the most health, she can deal the most damage, and the mechanics of it are just so much to deal with at once you're focusing on multiple things there are two stages to the boss fight when she comes back a second time she has her full health bar and even more health this time it's bonkers but what really clicked for me because i tried it over and over again last season in season four and i was i wasn't even close <laughs> wasn't even close so this time around i'm playing a rogue which is the character class that i normally like in diablo so i thought okay i'm going in with my favorite class last season i was i was playing a sorcerer trying something different clearly didn't work for me rogue just worked perfectly though because it's quick it's mobile like i can zip around the arena really quickly which is very very important in the lilith boss fight in particular because her mechanics has a lot of aoe there's a lot of times where she's trying to box you in so that she can like guarantee a hit on you. And the problem with the Echo of Lilith fight that I think most players run into is that she can apply like a, a tormented debuff, mm. which let me explain, don't worry, it's very simple. She has certain attacks that if she hits you with them, you'll get like a little stack, which will mean that from now on, you take even more damage. And that stack can be reapplied over and over again until basically she can just like one hit you with anything. So the main trick of this fight was just to be mobile enough to avoid those hits so that I didn't get the stacks. And when I was playing Rogue, much more manageable. When you're playing a Sorcerer, a little less so because they're not as quick as a Rogue. But yeah, it was a great feeling to uh, to finally beat her and mainly because you also get an achievement for it, which I think like less than 3% of Xbox players have. So no goes to show it's still even five seasons into Diablo 4, it's still proving to be such a difficult fight. I've got a couple of platformers I've played this this mm. year that <laughs> I've struggled with. I'm not normally very good at platformers. The platformers, the boss. Like, yeah, the, the genre is the boss for me. I just, <laughs> I'm forever useless at them. I'm better with 2D platformers, which is why I really enjoyed playing Tales of Kunzera Zao. The bosses in Zao are also very cool. Mm. And we had um, Abu Bakar Salim on the stream and he got to see Sam try what he, uh, Abu said that <laughs> a lot of players found it very difficult. It's what they in the studio called the elevator. Mm. <laughs> and it's not a boss fight, but it is this thing you have to do in order to get to a boss fight. Oh. And it's quite literally like a tower of torture. You're just on an elevator, slowly getting lifted up and more and more enemies are being added to the like each level. That's true. And it doesn't have like a checkpoint. So if you die, you go all the way back to the bottom and he said that a lot of players die. That and I think, I can't remember if Sam did it first try or not, or like he maybe died right at the end. But when I gave it a go as well, I found it so tricky mm. because it's like tiny as well. There's not like much room to maneuver. Mm. And a lot of the enemies, will there'll be some that like swoop in from the up top because they're birds and there's others that will like rush you in the side. And so you're trying to like find the perfect mini window of opportunity that you can jump through. And if you get it wrong, you can get hit here, hit there, like so easy to lose all your life. So yeah, the elevators that <laughs> it's like an early stumbling block, I think, for a lot of players in Zao. But once you get through it, you're rewarded with another boss fight. And that boss fight is very cool as well. Again, screen filling size of it and just beautiful effects. Sam did first try that one, I think. He definitely beat it on stream. I don't remember it if it's first it's try. It's this like big, like I think it was in. Uh, an owl or an eagle mm. or a big bird, basically, okay. that can like shoot lightning out. Oh man, it's sick. Yeah, so cool. that boss fight is very cool. Mm. So I've covered platformers, which I'm terrible at, but I know that you're a you're a Souls girly, which you're great at. Thank so why don't you. you tell me about some of the, surely there's been something you've had to fight this year. I mean, this is one of the biggest years for Souls likes ever with Elden Ring coming out, but 
The shadow of the earth tree. Yeah. We'll get to that. But oh, okay. first I've got a bone or I've got a shell to pick with <laughs> another crab's treasure. Oh yeah. Um See which, it was a great year for Souls. It was a great year for Souls Likes because game. another crab's treasure is such a fantastic game and a fun take on the Souls genre set up. Mm. Um, and not just a gimmicky game either. No, no. Like actually, like, rock solid difficulty, mm -hmm. like great accessibility options anyway, so that everyone can enjoy it. But also the like shell swapping is a great mechanic. Shell swapping, uh, weapon swapping, yeah. even the like um, skill unlock tree, the way that that all ties together. So good. Super interesting. Yeah. Don't discount it if like, I know some people might look at the graphics of it and think, oh, it's a cartoony game. It's like, no, this no. is a really well-made Souls-like game. Absolutely. And you should all try it. Yeah. Yeah. What was tough about it? Um, I mean, there's a bunch of tough mainline bosses as well as some optional ones that Ooh. are kind of creepy. And some of the the scarier ones are like this massive gross crab that um, stalks you across these sand oh, dunes that no. you have to cross. So there's only like a few safe spots that you can do. It's optional, but- There are always like, horrible places in Souls Likes. I know. That everyone's like, oh, don't go there. Don't go to the poison place. Don't go to the like sandy place. Like, Shrine of Amara, I'm yeah. looking at you. Um, no, this is uh, a, in the sands between called Pagorus and he's just a big scary crab that mm -hmm. has a massive plastic fork as a weapon. <laughs> Um, and he's called the ravenous actually, so that's probably why he's got uh, the plastic for for yeah dinner time or the dinner. Um, but oh the the actual the first story boss for another crab's treasure um, is the Duchess. Okay. And she has some really sick mechanics for a souls like and for another crab's treasure. For like an entry boss as well. For an entry boss for sure. Um, like Charlie and I um, played it on stream earlier in the year. And so she hits hard. She's got this, um, she's very fancy because she's a duchess as well. So she has like a tea strainer as a weapon that almost acts as like a, a whip to pull you in. So oh. like she catches you in the tea strainer, oh. pulls you in. And like, I thought it would have been like a, a big club or a mallet or something. Why? Because that's what tea strainers look like. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't they? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I guess because you're a little crab, she catches mm. you in it like a tea Oh, bag. yeah, yeah. Um, she does that. She does big thumping um, actions as well. So she's got long and short range, range covered. Um, but my least favorite thing is she like spews oil, like bubbling oh. stuff around God. like for this AOE attack. And then she like rolls around as well really fast like she'll roll into you so there's a lot of like you were talking about coordination in terms of like the whole screen like filling up yeah. the whole arena is kind of covered by her attacks so it's a pretty feisty boss fight i had to do it quite a few times it was quite a challenge does the enjoyed, oil also like slow you down or anything like that i think it does it poisons you oh, it, i God. think it makes you like it sounds horrible. I think <laughs> horrible, but worth it. In yeah, the end. it is absolutely jokes like finishing it. And that is another good thing. Sorry about why it's such a hard boss fight, but so satisfying is it's so jokes like some of the dialogue that you get from yeah. it. Yeah, and it's good humor it's in the game. So funny, man. Yeah. Really good. Enjoyed that, even though I cried over it. Well, he is pretty cute getting smashed up by giant lobsters all the time. Um, I had one other game that was really, uh, <laughs> it's a bit unconventional when you're thinking about boss fights, mm. but it is called boss fights in the game. And it honestly was like a breakout hit for me. I, I, as soon as I saw this game, I knew, oh, I'm so in, I love this. And then I, then I went, when I started playing it, I realized, oh my God, Balatro is possibly one of the hardest things I've ever played mm. in my life. It's like, it's a roguelike game. So mm. every time you lose, you start over, you have to like collect all these different cards and jokers. And at its essence, it's just poker. You're just trying to make a good poker hand, Texas Hold'em rules, all of that. So your flushes, your straights, you, you know, your four of a kind, all of mm. that. That's the, the gist of it. Yeah. But what Balatro does that <laughs> makes it very difficult is that you're up against these like Anti, so you need to earn a certain amount of like points in order to like pass on to the next stage. And at a certain like every time you get to the next stage, the amount that you need goes up even more. Mm. So you're constantly fighting against this 
mathematical probability sort of decision making that you have to do to build your deck with like cheat cards to help you go even higher in number. So for example, things like five of a kind exist in Balatro, which normally isn't possible with a real deck of cards. So Balatro lets you like mess around with the rules of poker to try and achieve your goals. When it comes to the boss ante though, which is normally ante eight, so this is like the eighth stage. And for you to win at Balatro, you need to beat the eighth boss. And uh, you can then keep going more and more and more, kind of like New Game Plus in a way. But the rules for the boss antis are just ridiculous. Some of them are so difficult, I don't think I've ever beaten them. But every time you start a new run on Balatro, you don't know what that boss is going to be until you get there. So you have this issue where you're planning just to get to the next stage, trying to remember Okay, but in a couple more stages, I'm going to have to face the eighth boss and I have no idea what to prepare for. So you might go in with a rock solid strategy for all seven bosses before that and then your strategy suddenly falls apart at the final hurdle. Because mm. some of these antis, they're like, oh, you're only allowed to play one hand. Mm. And you're like, well, that doesn't work for me actually because now I'm only going to make this many points and it's useless. Or anytime you play a card, you the rest of your cards won't count in your scoring. And you're like, okay, great, again. This ruins my strategy. So I suppose in a way there's kind of this idea of, okay, you play the game enough times, you'll eventually beat it because you'll get lucky enough for your strategy to line up. But it's, it can get to the point where you think, I'm doing everything right. But then it just falls apart. And it's very difficult. Yeah. It's not a conventional boss fight, but trust me, Balatro getting anti-8. Try it and you'll see why I was pulling my hair out for weeks. It took me so long to get my first win. But when I did, so good. Nice. But then you have to do it all over again. Because the game's fun and you want to play more. Nice. That's why. We mentioned it earlier. Obviously, we couldn't speak about the hardest bosses of that we've taken on this year without mentioning Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree. Mm. One of the most exquisite pieces of DLC. Before we get on to that, let us know down in the comments some of the hardest bosses that you've beaten this year. And be sure to turn on notifications because we'll have another video coming out about even more bosses, maybe very soon. So mm. keep your eyes peeled for that. We've got a list of some tough ones. I'm gonna try and beat them in time for that video. I'm not confident. We've got a hit list of characters that are getting taken out <laughs> for that so video. Oh God. It's like we set ourselves a challenge for it. It's not gonna go well. And maybe we'll include some of your ones as well. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, let's talk about Elden Ring then. Earlier this year, we were like so fresh faced and like so eager for a challenge, mm. getting ready for Shadow of the Erd Tree. But before we did that, we hadn't done one key part, which was defeating Moog, Lord of Blood. Yeah. And as all of us Elden Ring gamers out there know, in order to access the DLC, he's quite a key point. So Gotta do it. Um, when we were getting ready for that, and we actually did record our efforts and, and put up some tips here on YouTube and TikTok for this. Um, if you still haven't done it, go check that out. Yeah. Then come back here and tell us. It was easy, actually. Because <laughs> you probably will. Yeah. But for us, it took a while. Yeah, it, it took, took a, a, while. A, a, a while to do it. Mainly for me, anyway, it was because I was severely under level trying yeah, to were. do that. Yeah. Um, but fair play for uh, doing it under leveled i mean that's well that's for <laughs> leads back to my other point is i'd much rather just hit my head against the wall in a game until yeah. i do it because i'm, I'm like give like it that. to me i'm stubborn i know yeah yeah you are stubborn in games as well just, so uh, your build wasn't well your build was not uh let's call it what do you call it efficient no what's the word I optimized, optimized i guess yeah I, like, I was running you were Again, doing... I, I don't pay attention to like min-maxing in games like Elden Ring. I just like to put number like. where I want mm. and smash things with a giant sword. That's what I like to do. Call it the simple way of playing it, but strength, 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 bit of dex, never worry about health. Because if, if I don't get hit by stuff, I don't need to worry about health. Yeah, I just kill bar, everything quickly and I'm good. It was so small, the Which health bar. It was... does not help for the Moog fight because this guy... <sighs> It's his second stage yeah. that is the most frustrating because with with any kind of souls like boss, it's rhythm. Mm -hmm. Like you're you yeah, you yeah. learn their like moveset and then you learn the timing and the correct way to like not get hit. Mm. 
Mm. So it's either a roll, or maybe you sidestep, or maybe you go around them, or mm. you double back, or whatever it is. Or go or into you jump. them sometimes. Yeah, yeah, or go into them, which might it feels counterintuitive sometimes. But once you've learned those, great. You just remember which one to do at the right time. Mm. Watch them. Learn how they swing up for an attack so you know which one's coming. And then you attack in the appropriate window. Mm -hmm. I feel like Moog ignores a lot of those rules sometimes. Yeah. Especially in the second phase when there's... Yeah. Well, it's also just the like double types of damage he does mm -hmm. as well. Because you're having to look out for fire damage and yep. being maneuverable and resistant to that. And then also the blood loss that blood he loss can inflict crazy, on bro. him is wild. Unless you have properly prepared for that. Um, not me. Not you. <laughs> didn't do not that. You. you didn't get I a didn't shackle to begin with. And you didn't... I did have, have a shackle. Oh, you did. But you well, did Oh, no. Not to begin with. Yeah, you're right. I didn't have it to begin with. When it got a shackle. I did go and get it eventually. I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to do it. But I, I didn't get the other bit. You didn't get the Crimson Burst tier. No. That's wild because that, to me, was like obviously very necessary. Mm. And um, because the Crimson Burst tier... Um, makes his like damage rings that he stacks what lilith does as well Ooh, what we're talking about thing. yeah yeah all those um damage like stacks that he does rings you. yeah yeah that's that the one yeah yeah that. yeah <laughs> it negates those and so you're not dealing so you don't you're take not any taking... of that damage no oh my god the amount of you could Flipping have, flasks I used to drink, having to deal with that. I know, you could have done it in like your second go, I bet, if you just got that tier. But yeah. anyway, we did it. And then it. that unlocks a whole new door of pain in Shadow <laughs> of Thanks, the Urge. Thanks, Bandai Namco. What were you thinking? We do, we love you, Bandai. Don't, yeah. don't listen to him. I love Souls and Elden Ring. <laughs> one that I'm stuck on at the moment is, oh, well, this is one of the things that I love about Souls games, mm. right? Is that... Some, I'll come across bosses, have absolutely no trouble with them. Yeah, there Boss, are some that I'm like, wait, that was... What's that everyone, what's everyone talking about? Seriously, what was it going to do? Because it didn't even get to yeah. attack, I killed it so quick. And there's probably a lot of you thinking the same thing yeah. about some of these bosses, but... I don't want to hear it. Okay. But Commander Gaius... Mm. Oh, that man. I've heard his oh. name being mentioned by a lot of people in, in, <laughs> in Elden Ring. Again, well, that is... Yeah, that's what I really love about the... Well, the game and the DLC is that... Yeah, so many people will be like, Oh, that one was really easy. That one was fine. Maybe they won't even fight them at all because they're completely optional. But um, obviously, Concert Redan is a whole other beast. But... Commander Get Gaius, eventually. what annoys me is that my fiance Parker did it like first time, no problem at all, because he has like this- <sighs> He's one of those guys. One of these guys, right. what can I say? But he had this like thorn build that oh. he um, like, really, like uses and that is just mm -hmm. super effective against him. However, melee and magic is a lot tougher and similarly with a lot of the bosses that we've discussed he's got a super unique move set and a super like area covering it so mm. he's so fast on his wee little piggy, <laughs> piggy. Wee piggy. i mean there's probably a hog or something like that. i don't even so know what quick, it is a boar it's yeah. magic boar probably oh, stupid magic boars always get me <laughs> He's throwing you up in the air. He's like stabbing you sideways, which makes for some funny God. death animations, to be fair. But <laughs> then he also has like some of the more challenging boss features that I find from like Redan fight and, and other Elden Ring ones is when he goes flying up in the air and he'll come <laughs> storming, down. storming down to earth again. Looks cool. Mm -hmm. Hard as hell to counter it though. Yeah, and I think that's what like from soft have done so well actually in um shadow of the earth tree is that uh, well and elden ring they've perfected this like boss dance that keeps you on your toes mm. for so many runs of it you think you're getting closer by your like third or fourth go and then 60 later you're like just one more time the sleeves the sleeves are deep just with what they I can do just when I thought I was out Commander mm. Gaius pulls me right back in I think you're right they've elevated the like cinematography 
like and the entertainment value mm. of boss fights by bringing in more of those like extraneous elements like going off screen more like uh more physics effects more like just general like post-processing effects that make the boss fights feel more epic yeah i feel like they doubled down on that because everyone responded so well to what they did in the base game mm. like you said with the radon fight out in the fields that moment where he's coming crashing down so, everyone was like oh my so god this cool. is the coolest thing i've ever seen yeah. so they were like let's do more of that <laughs> all right they want it we'll do more and now because of that we have even more painful bosses to fight in shadow of the earth tree so yeah you got what you wanted nice one and this video was brought to you by Fight Night, Peacock's gripping new crime drama series. On the night of Muhammad Ali's comeback fight in 1970, an audacious armed robbery takes place that's set to change Atlanta forever. Kevin Hart's hustler, Chicken Man, must fight to clear his name in the aftermath. Also starring Samuel L. Jackson, Taraji P. Henson, Don Cheadle, and Terrence Howard, this is a knockout show that is not to be missed, starting September 5th on Peacock. This land we standing on, Belong to us. I'm thinking Black Vegas. Right here in Atlanta. I see Atlanta. That's Black Mecca. We build our houses, build our businesses, and we become kings. Who's in? We got more in common than you think. Our love for this city. We are a vibrant, inclusive city that's open for business. This here is when Atlanta turned them ashes into gold. But now over to you gamers. What was the toughest boss battle that you had to take part in this year? Hit the comments to tell Henry and I all about your most gruesome encounters. And if you still can't beat him, maybe we'll give you a little tip in the comments as well. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.